We typically prefer to have the x squared positive, so what I'm going to do is subtract 7x from each side and add 8 to each side. So I'm going to be left with 3x squared minus 7x plus 8 equals 0. Now, can I just factor this? Is this factoring monix? Not quite. And it's not quite because we don't have a monic. We've got that 3 out in front. Now, the one tool that we really have not emphasized very much at all, but we do, uh, we do have as a as a strategy, is that good old quadratic formula. So we have opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And this is one of our tools that will always work. And sometimes it's it's nice to use if if we can't easily factor it. So, what is our A? A equals 3 because it's the one in front of the x squared. What is the B? Because it's the one in front of the x. And what is the C? 8. So, we simply just substitute those numbers in. Opposite of B, so that would be 7 plus or minus the square root of 7 squared minus 4 times 1 times 8 all over 2 times 3. A should be 3, right? So i got to fix this then. 4 times 3 times 8. Does that look right? Yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to first simplify what's in the parentheses, or in the square root. 49 is 7 squared. 4 times 3 times 8. What's 4 times 3 times 8? 152. 152? 96? Now either way... Some of you might see an issue here. We've got the square root of negative 45, 47. Why is this an issue? Yeah, we can't take a negative square root. So what's the answer here? No solution. That means there are no roots. There is a quadratic formula for this one? No. no. This one we can factor. It's a monic. Two numbers that multiply to 49 and add to negative 14. Yeah, they're both minus 7. I think I heard someone say x minus 7 squared. So it's the same factor. So the answer is x could equal 7. 7 and 7, that's the only option. So we got the quadratic formula. We've got factoring. Those are two different ways when it says solve what we can do. So let's go on to number two. Uh, identify the important characteristics about the function. Is this, what form is this in? Vertex form. So if they're asking us for, oh, they are asking us for the vertex. Beautiful. So go ahead, write down your vertex for this equation. What's the vertex? If this is in vertex form, you should be able to quickly identify what the vertex is. All right. So what is the vertex? 3, negative 8. It's the opposite of this one, It's the and this number. This is H, and this is K. Uh, is it a minimum or a maximum? Minimum. It's a minimum because this is going to be up like a cup. It's going to be up like a cup because this number is positive, <laughs> so the vertex is a minimum. 
So parabola opens up. Up like a cup. Line of symmetry? Three X equals three. It might help to graph it first. So we got three, negative eight. This is the vertex, three comma negative eight. Now, it's not very clear what the roots are. If we want to find the roots, we need to get into a different form. Do you want to have a good way to find the roots here? Yeah? Yeah? Uh, yes, we could eventually distribute the two before we do that to uh, because of order operations. So, we'd have to... We would have to take this x minus 3 and do x minus 3 times x minus 3 because that's what x minus 3 squared is. So then we'd have x squared minus 3x minus 3x plus 9 minus 8. distribute the two. A lot of work put into a different form. It's still not simplified. Now, what form do we call this? Yes, yeah, standard or normal form? I just did a lot of simplification to make this look like this. But that still doesn't, standard form still doesn't help me find the roots. What form helps me find the roots? Factored form. So I want to take this, and I want to make it into factored form. Now, some of you might have recognized the first thing this, we can factor out a 2. I can factor out a 2. Does anybody see how we could factor this? Now that we've got a monic? Yeah? 2 numbers that multiply to 5, add to negative 6. 1 and 5. x minus 1, x minus 5. So with all that algebra that we just did, we can get into factored form. We've got a factored form, we've got a normal form, and we've got vertex form with the same equation. Yep, our roots are 1 and 5. So we're going to cross the x-axis here and the x-axis here. That's enough to get us a good sketch. Confirms that it opens up. The y-intercept. Which form is it easiest to see the y-intercept in? Remember, y-intercept is when x equals 0. Vertex form? We do have this minus 8, but that's not necessarily when what happens when x equals 0. We could plug in 0 for x, but there's, even, there's one form that's even easier to plug in 0 for x and to figure out what it is. Yeah, if we take a look at our standard form and plug in 0 for x, this term is 0, this term is 0, and we're just left with 10. So the y-intercept is 10. So it crosses the y-axis up here at 10.
So if this seemed like a lot, there is going to be more practice tonight on the, on the homework. But the big idea, and this kind of brings it all together, you want to be comfortable with vertex form, standard form, factored form, that each tell you something different. <coughs> all right, I'm going to give you another... Um, if you turn your sheet around, let me give you another five minutes or so to... So, I'm not suggesting that you do this, but you could. You could say A equals 1, B equals negative 7, C equals negative 44. So the opposite of B plus or minus the square root of se negative 7 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 44 all over 2 times 1. Is that the most efficient way to do it? No. no. But you can do that. If you're taking the final exam and all you remember is the quadratic formula, you can solve any quadratic, assuming you don't make any algebra mistakes or arithmetic mistakes. But if this can be factored, you've got a much easier route ahead. So the factors of 44, 1 and 44, 2 and 22, 3 and 4 and 11, I might, I might stop there. Because that can get us to negative 7. That, yes, the 11 has to be negative. The 4 has to be positive. So our x either equals 11 or our x equals negative 4. Now, if you see something crazy big like this on the exam tomorrow, should you run away? Should you be scared? I'm sorry, the test tomorrow or the final exam next week? Oh, okay. It's the same problem. This is the chunking idea. Can we see that chunk? It's the exact same chunk. They're trying to make it all that yellow chunk something. What do we want to call it? I'm not going to call it X because it's already got an X in there. And I don't want to say X minus 4 equals X. Let's call it K. I heard K. So we're going to call that X minus 4 chunk K. So we've got k squared minus 7k minus 44. Is this an easier problem to do? Yeah, this is a lot easier. This is just demonic. We already know how to factor this. It's the problem we just did. k minus 11, k plus 4. So we just substitute it in. We, this is the chunking idea. Now we're not done yet. Now that we've got, we've got it factored, we can substitute this back in for k. We know that k equals x minus 4, so we're going to have x minus 4 minus 11, and x minus 4 plus 4. So this is going to be x minus 15 times x minus 0 which is just x. Now we've got it all factored. So x, could e x is going to equal what? 15 or 0. Any questions on this? So this idea of chunking, if you seem crazy like to say, is there a way I can express this simpler? Is there a chunk that keeps appearing that I can just call it something? And if I call it something, ex we express it and make this whole thing easier. All right. Last problem. Parabola opens up or down? Up. Vertex is? Negative 3, negative 7. See, if you get a problem like this, these should be quick, easy points. Find the vertex. Describe it as a minimum or a maximum. Is this vertex the smallest point on the graph or the biggest point? Minimum. minimum. It's the minimum. Minimum. Sure. Line of symmetry is what? X equals negative 3. 
So I'm going to draw that in. This is the line of symmetry. I, did, I guess it didn't say. X equals negative 3 is a vertical line. Y intercept. They kind of draw, drew it in for you. X equals 2. Or Y equals 2. Sorry. It looks like t uh, they, they drew a little dot there. Look, at, look careful there. Um, roots. Where are the roots here? Yeah, you can't really tell. Let's skip roots for right now. Because you can't tell from the graph, so it looks like we're going to need to get it in form. Um, equation in vertex form, it says with A equals 1. So remember, our vertex form looks like this. So if we know our vertex and our A is 1, what's our H? It's going to be plus 3 because it's going to be minus a minus, minus 7. Now, when it says expand the equation to put it in standard form, yeah, it's all that it's all that algebra, work, it's all that that arithmetic work. So we just have to rewrite this as x plus three times x plus three. It's not that much work. So you gotta do all that multiplication out there. So this is in standard form. Yeah, we can't get the roots from that either. Now, can we think of a way that this factors nicely? Let's say the multiples of 2, uh, 1 and 2. Can we use that to get to 6? No. Which means we can't factor it with integers. Which means that our roots aren't going to be integers. Which kind of makes sense because it doesn't look like it's a whole number. It's going to be some fraction. It's going to be some decimal. Well, so how would we find the roots if we can't factor it? Quadratic formula. We would have to do this. We would have to do this. We would have to do this if we wanted to find the roots. Yeah, I think we're going to hold off on that for right now. Mm-hmm.